And we are live. JT here. Welcome to the huddle. The huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I want to take a moment to thank you. Whether you are tuning in live as we stream this conversation into our Facebook community, whether you are watching the replay on YouTube or on Facebook, or whether you're listening to the audio on the podcast, thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And here's my friendly reminder to you. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. So my challenge to you is to go all in on this conversation, to remove any distractions and really keep that mind wide open. And I guarantee you, you will gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will not only help you succeed as an athlete, but more importantly, in the game of life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with my special guest today. Uh, we first met after a coaching clinic I presented at last year. And one of the things that struck me when he reached out to me was just, he was such a open to new ideas. He was just really exemplified the curious mind and just wanted to find opportunities to learn, to grow, to become a stronger, more powerful version of himself. My guest in the huddle today is a Waterloo and St. FX football alum. He is also the co-founder of the Dream Academy, and he's currently in Teachers College at St. FX and, and learning to be a great educator. And, you know, just from the conversations that him and I have had other in previous uh, situations, I just know coming from a background in education that he's exactly what the system needs. My guest in the huddle today is Joshua Brown. How are you today, brother? Thank you for having me. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, brother. Just, you know, I'm really enthused for our conversation today. Before we get kicked off, I really want to take a moment just to remind everyone that, you know, one of the greatest gifts we can give anyone is our time and our energy. And one thing I often challenge myself to do is to count my blessings. And what I feel truly blessed of is to be able to share some of your time and energy with you today and to learn more about your journey and just uh, learn more about the things that you're creating in this world, brother. So thank you. Of course, of course. Okay. So we'll dive right in. Sure. So one of the things I often remind people, Joshua, is this idea that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So mm -hmm. I'm curious from you, what is an interesting fact? I had a coaching colleague that said, we all have our quirks that maybe a lot of people don't know about you that you'd be open to sharing with our community? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I would say like, I'm, I'm a very passionate person. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm honest, I, I'm hardworking. I, uh, I just, I, stri I strive on being someone who when we speak, uh, I I want to be able to, to leave my to, to leave my voice and my experience on um, on you, you know. And I I have strong beliefs. I have strong you know perspectives on things, and they can be changed. I I but I, I do want to be known as somebody who who stands on their beliefs, and I. I, I'm not afraid also to, you know, to, to challenge um, others to, to, to do things that 
that that may that may be different. Well, I love that, and and what I really heard from you again was that that open to new opportunities, new experiences. I know we'll dive a little bit deeper into that during our conversations, sure. and and just that idea of like a willingness to actually stop and think. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that those are important reminders of again about the power of having that open mind, that open parachute, but also having the courage to stop and think and make decisions, right? From, from your perspective. So I love yeah. it, brother. Okay. No, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, one, sport has obviously played an important role for you in your life, right? I, I mean, you just finished a, a successful U sport career as a football player at, at, at two schools. So I'm curious, you know, sports obviously played an important role for you in your life. Uh, you've played in Canada, you've played down South. So I'm curious, like what role, what has one lesson been that you've learned from sport that you still find yourself applying to your life today? Uh, don't take any day for granted. Okay. Um, I know getting back early on to, to my recruiting process and just kind of thinking about that, just, um, I do think I took a lot of days for granted in terms of when, you know, you're 17, 18, 19 years old and getting these emails and messages from coaches, oh, we want you, you're going to be so great, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. You know, I felt like just taking the time to put, put more work in, watch more films, just focusing on the little things, be just kind of stretching and um, just getting into university. Um, again, when I was getting injured in my second, third year, uh, taking care of my body, uh, I really wasn't, I was just doing, I was doing the little things like stretching and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, as I get to, to now coaching and teaching and, you know, being a mentor now for, for a lot of young kids, um, just taking every day, you know, as a blessing and, well, one thing I try to you know challenge myself every day is I, I wake up or I go to my bed and just three things that I'm grateful for every day and just making sure that like I don't leave any stones unturned now that I'm transitioning to, to a new phase in my life where I I wake up in peace I go to bed and I'm happy and I know that I don't want to to look back you know 10 15 years from now and say hey like I wish you know I did I did this at 26 or 27. Um, I look at it and I'm like, you know, I, I feel like I'm still continuing to work and I'm still continuing to put put the to lay the foundation to, to the palace that I want to continue to build for myself. So just being able to uh, look at every day now as a blessing and and continue to to have that that motor and, and want to continue to challenge myself to want more and want better for sure. I love the simplicity of that, right? And again, I know you and I have had many conversations off offline, you know, about life, about football, about, you know, just, you know, the, I love how you talked about, you know, this palace that you're building. And, and what I really love is it all comes back to something so simple, right? It's like that idea of like being grateful, right? Uh, being, you know, feeling blessed for everything you've, you've, you know, experienced up to this point. And why I, that resonates with me is, as you know, like when you truly feel gratitude and, and, and blessed in your heart, and we're not talking about here, but we're talking about that deep subconscious mind. It's like you said, it's that, that deeper sense of peace. And what I would sort of encourage you to think about is everything that you've experienced up to this point, I firmly believe you had to go through that because that's going to make you a stronger, more powerful mentor, yeah. teacher and educator and coach the next generation because you have that lived experience. Right. You yeah. needed to go through that adversity, like we were talking about before, in order to take things to the next level. No, exactly. So I'm curious, right? You made the uncomfortable decision, right? I remember again one of the first conversations we had where you said, you know, I'm gonna, you know, go out east and I'm gonna go explore life out there. I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna leave what's safe and comfortable here in Ontario and, and go out east. So I'm curious. What was the inspiration to really pivot and really, you know, go outside the box, go take the road less traveled, as cliche as that is? Um, I definitely considered the thought of going back to Waterloo. 
um, to my fifth, fifth year there and just taking a couple courses and then kind of seeing what, what was meant for me. Um, but during the COVID like lockdown in Ontario, I was again self reflecting, a lot of reflecting, and uh, just talking to a lot of people in my inner circle about what do you think I should do. And uh, Coach Carlo Honorati was someone who was kind of adamant about get your education degree. You need to get an education. And he was so adamant about that. And um, again, just kind of sitting down, reflecting on that, I uh, sent some emails out. And, um, my uh, my grades weren't the greatest in my undergrad, so I was it was kind of mm, like we, we can't you know and, and then again working with my program I was doing a, a lot at the time I was doing uh, like university fairs so so I had like university schools kind of on like a Zoom call and just started talking to some of my student athletes about the program and you know just a kind of Q and A stuff like that um, then. University of St. FX came on, St. FX came on, and Coach Sweat came on, and he was talking. Uh, and I was like, man, if I see this, you know, maybe it's talking different a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I messaged him after and said, Coach, can we talk? Like, can we, you know, see if this is a possibility for me to, to look about going out there to coach, not to play, to coach. And mm. I think he had messaged me back, said, yeah, like, I'll. I'll get back to you in a couple of days. And he said, do you have eligibility left? And I was like, um, I don't know, because the, the, the COVID year was the was supposed to be my, my last year. So I said, I, I have no idea. And he said, he said, let me let me sell this and I'll get back to you. And uh, he basically sent a message saying that him and Coach Martin want to be with me. And then they were just kind of like painting this canvas, you know, this beautiful canvas for me. Like, you're going to come here. Uh, Get your education degree. You know, it's a beautiful education um, program, and you're gonna play your year out. We're gonna win. We're gonna have success. And you're, you know, you're the opportunity to to coach you in your second year, and you're, you're gonna leave with, with a education degree. You know, most importantly, and, and just talking about my program. And I think at the time it was like, yeah, my program is what mattered to me at that time. Um, I gave my all with football, and it was just nothing was really like running into the door every single time with football. So it was like my program was was everything to me, and um, they were pushing that. They were pushing come play football, and I was like looking into the program. I had an interview with uh, Dr. Wendy Mackey, who again great interview. She talked a lot about the program, and uh, I loved it. I was like, yeah, it's, it's small, it's inclusive, and uh, just again. Okay reflecting again with my, my inner circle, my family, my parents. I just I just felt like this was something that it was God's calling. Like I just felt like this was I, I had something that I had to do. And obviously I'm, I'm a very family oriented person and it it, it was hard to, to to come out east. Uh I'm glad I did it because what I've learned since I've been out here is is it's been a blessing and I'm growing so much as a person. Um and uh, the connections I've made out here, the people are amazing. Um, so yeah, I, like that whole that little experience, that little story, that little journey I had to go on that led me here. It's it's just been a it's been a blessing. You know, it's interesting. You know, even in the year we've known each other, you know, the growth I've seen in you is by you going out there. You know, I don't know. There's 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 different. Um, peace that I see about you there's calm and peace about you because I think you've all it's almost reinforced this idea that you're exactly where you're supposed to be right like you're on the path yeah. you're supposed to be so yeah. I'm, I'm curious you know um you went out there right to education mm -hmm. like what has it been like right transitioning from student athlete to where now you know you've done the coaching thing the mentorship for a bit right in your community back in Toronto and now you're starting to do it as a profession, right? By going into teachers college and actually getting in the classroom. What has that transition like been for you? It's it's uh, especially as a coach, it's it's, it's had it's uh it's, it's I'm still kind of adjusting to it. Even like the breakdowns and stuff, like I feel like I'm still obligated to get in the breakdown with the team and right. kind of like give a speech. Sometimes I like I have to be like, oh, I can't. I'm not I'm not one of the guys anymore. Like I have to yeah. to kind of peel back, but. <laughs> The football football aspect of it, it's it's I, I was still adjusting to it, you know, and um 
I want to continue to, to, to be an energizer, continue to lead my, like you said, my, my calmness now, uh, my energy and just um, what I, that information and, and my spirit be able to, to kind of continue to, to, to rub off on the unit and eventually the team. And we continue to, to create, you know, a, a competitive and, um, you know, a hardworking uh, group and you know, continue to do some positive things in new sports. But, you know, with, with the education aspect of it, um, you know, I got there and one thing I kind of strived myself on was I don't want to wear any St. effects men's football. Uh, attire during my school my school days because I don't want to be seen as a hey he's a student athlete let's look at him or talk to him a little different so I tried to go on this this little phase during the September I don't want them these students to know me as the football player I don't know me as Joshua the person so I uh would wear my clothing and Go on about my days and go on about my days. And I've, you know, eventually they, they kind of caught on that I was a football player, but it was just the ability to, to learn more about myself and them take mm -hmm. the initiative to, to want to learn about me it was uh, amazing. Um, one, of the, one of the students, like one of my friends in the program, uh, she had said to me, well, we're doing like this, this goodbye thing as we, as we all headed to the practicum. She was like, you know, I didn't even know you played football until. Uh, the homecoming game and someone was like Joshua Joshua field she's like Josh who I was like you know to me that meant a lot because uh like I said like my parents always you know strive you know and push for my sister and my brother and I to it's our it's our who we are as people is what you know we want to leave the world and like a lasting impression on them and our impact and without the helmet is what you know I want to be able to leave my impact on not what I did on the field it's it's what I did in society, in my community, and who I was as, as a as a partner, as a friend, as, as a brother, as a son, and et cetera, et cetera. It's that, and as I get off that tangent to talk about, you know, school, um, the concepts were the same in terms of, you know, developing connections, uh, caring for my students, being able to, to create, you know, an inclusive environment, but things like learning about, uh, different concepts for me like uh, we talked earlier about um, understanding you know the indigenous culture being able to understand you know the black Canadian culture and being able to read articles or read uh, sorry not read uh, listen to TED talks and um, that stuff podcasts like it just, just kind of changed my outlook and um, it changed how I want to be as an educator as a mentor and like you said like I think being in a slow paced environment here in Nova Scotia, and again, and Nova Scotia, it's, uh, it's changed how I have perceived the way of living. And as an educator, I want to be someone that's calm and I want to be someone that's, um, I'm a bigger person by, by, by stature, but I want to be, you know, gentle with my students and my student athletes that you look at me and I'm able to help guide and, be informative and help shape your way of learning. I love that. And, you know, I, I want to circle back because I love what you're talking about because I hear a lot of like, I want to change, I want to innovate what we're teaching in schools, which uh, near dear to my heart as a former educator. You know, the one thing I really want to acknowledge you for is having the courage, right? It, it's interesting that, you know, I'll share this with you and then I'll come back to why. It really resonated what, with me what you said about, you know, when you, you made the intentional decision when you first got to St. FX to not wear any football stuff because you wanted people to see you for who you were beyond just, you know, Josh, the football player. Yeah. And why that resonates with me is as I was leaving teaching, the last semester I taught, and, no, and with the exception of my wife, she's the only one that might know this, is I intentionally stopped wearing contacts and I went to glasses. And I remember that it was my way of starting to shift my image of who I was, because I think in my yeah. heart of hearts, I knew I was leaving teaching, I was leaving coaching. And then at the same time, I started to give away a lot of my school swag, right? Because I yeah. started to just, I, I felt like I needed to physically release some of yeah. my former identity. And it's just interesting how that physical process is almost kind of like a, a letting go. 
and yeah. allowing new things. So it's like spring cleaning, right? Your identity. And yeah, exactly. so, so it really resonates with me what you're saying, because I know how it's not easy and how challenging it can be. And just being able to do it, you know, really um, at a young chronological age, like that's huge, brother. Like kudos to you. Yeah, I ha- but see, like I had to go through it to, to yeah. see. Like I, I remember being the guy with the Waterloo stuff on and yeah. sitting sitting back in the back of the class watching, you know, mixtapes and highlight tapes and, <laughs> you know, just, oh, this exam next week, what? Yeah. Can someone pass me the, someone send me the notes? And, you know, that that was the the persona of yeah. a, student, a student athlete, you know, that I, that I had deemed that it had to be. But you don't have to. Be a person, you know, be be who I am and, and what I want to stand for it isn't that, you know, and a lot of student athletes get challenged early, especially in university, because it's so up tempo for them. So that they're all kind of chasing life and they're all trying to fit in, you know, and that becomes a stigma. And where are your where are your you know your your school gear and where to class because it gets more attention and it, it's no. You know who you who are you and what do you stand for and what makes you you and what's you know Coach Barman says all the time like what's your why like what what makes you you know intrinsically motivated like what what's what's you and for myself like that's not who I want to be I don't want to be known as the football player with the football swag and football. I'm a yeah. human being that wants to make change and I want to be able to to leave this earth one day and with a lasting impact you know and I mm-hmm. want to there's a lot of information and resources and stuff that I want to be able to provide help, you know, in, in, in our country for our sport and for our people that we need to come together and, and work together and, and do better for the, for the youth, do better for each other and just continue to grow. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm curious, right? So you you co-founded this Dream Academy, right? You were working with, you know, other young people in your community that you grew up in in Etobicoke, and and so you you can definitely tell, like talking to you, that you you're really passionate about like mentorship and coaching and, you know, inspiring and empowering. Like that that's that's what I've always loved about our conversations. So so I'm curious, right? As someone who, you know, is you know, sees the big picture, you know, wants to empower. What do you see as like a change that needs to happen in order to empower the next generation of young people, right? And obviously I have my ideas, but I also recognize that I have my own kids that are soon to be teenagers. So I'm a little bit farther removed. So I'm just curious, like, what do we need to do coming out of these last two years to really elevate and empower young people to get to their next level of greatness? The message, the message has to be the same. We all have to be, I think we all need to put our egos aside and look at it. First things first, it's about the kids. And if it's not about the kids, then I, I just don't think you're, this, is, this isn't the profession, profession for you, you know? And I think mm-hmm. that at the end of the day, uh, it's about the young kids and we're just in, we're in a society right now and with TikTok and with the media, the way technology is going, that if we are able to work, like I said, like, can come together and work at this and really grow it. I think football can be as football, um, elevating youth and mentoring youth can be big. And I think it, the biggest thing is we just have to be able to, you know, work together in unison to, to make this thing uh, be big. And I think it's, it's just, I think first it's a lot of people who who are situated where they are. They gotta be able to kind of like look in the mirror and check their egos and say, hey, like I I, I love my job, but I want I want to see the youth um, do better. I want I want to be able to help give back to the youth. I want, you know, it doesn't hurt to, to put, you know, a 10, 15 minute conversation with, you know, kids in, um, Cheddar back to in these in these uh, communities here in Nova Scotia, just to come here and um, and speak to them. You know, there's communities in Windsor, there's communities you know up north in northern Ontario, just to be able to to go into these communities and and speak to them. You know, in elementary school, high schools, and for all able to kind of like come together uh, and work together at this and, and really chip away. I really believe that um, 
we do have the resources we have we have the people that that want to make change but it's just it's just something that's got to be within that we got to be able to to get to and i think that we're all like working so hard but if we come together uh we can really do some amazing things i i believe I yeah well, and I love that, right? I love the simplicity of that. You know, the word that comes up for me is alignment, right? When I was speaking to the Football Canada President Jim Mullen, a few, you know, he talked about that was his one word that he wanted to see was alignment, right? From the top all the way down at all levels. And what I often share with people is I think everyone to a degree consciously understands alignments coming together. Uh, what I would challenge anyone is that anyone that's ever been on a strong and powerful team, whether it's on a sports team, whether it's in a family, whether it's a group of friends, yeah. right? Just how much more we can accomplish together, like team, right? Together, everyone achieves more, right? That cliche. Yeah. I actually had a mentor that actually said, when you bring one and one, you have 11. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that's so good, right? Because the logical mind says one and one is two. But no, yeah. you and I coming together. What if it was eleven? Yeah. No, exactly, exactly. Okay, that's where I think. I think for me, that's that's like where it starts. I think we just have to be able to. Um, I see the change. You know, we're, we're doing, we're, we're making. You know, our waves of, of like our approaches is, is getting better. I just feel like there's a lot of youth. Like let's let's use Toronto especially. Like, there's a lot of youth in Rexdale. Or, you know, Jane and Finch, who are, the resources are limited, you know, and you know, what stops them or, you know, if, if we were to go and do a poll or a survey to kids in those communities and ask them, you know, why don't you try to apply to a St. Mike's or Upper Canada College or a St. Andrews College? What stops you? And it's, it's the financial, it's the financial. And, you know, why aren't there like opportunities through funding um, to help mitigate that that yeah. um maybe you no know, one you know one scholarship for said you uh per year for the, these at risk you you know and it's just being able to to do things small things like that you know be able to have you know those guys like in the cfl being able to come into these elementary schools and speak to elementary schools in these at risk areas you know and i think if we're able like i said just to continue to come together and, and really chip at it you know um i think we'll we'll get somewhere and that's you know a, a great reminder right that that when you have people like we go into sometimes with our underserved communities let's just call a spade a spade right like communities that sometimes people you know that maybe don't think about that when you get people to go in there and actually pour their energy their enthusiasm their their passion their belief into mm -hmm. the people there that that gives them hope. That gives them hope for a brighter tomorrow. That belief that, hey, things can and will get better if you want them to, if you truly yeah. desire them, that that belief you can pass on to someone. And who knows that one conversation, that one visit, that one, you know, like you said, maybe it's a, that one take care of a, the financial barrier might be the one thing that sparks someone to change the trajectory in their family yeah. tree. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I think it's just time. I think we want to be able to invest our time into, mm -hmm. into kids in those areas. And like, we've got to understand too, like, like with, with being out here and just education, just learning from, you know, Mr. Brands, Coach Brands, like, um, a lot. A, when, I, when I got there the first day, you know, oh, Josh Brown, the football player, uh, he played at St. FX football. Oh, oh. And uh, there was, you know, a couple kids, obviously, who, where they weren't excited, you know, and it's just like, oh, so another kid, you know, another, you know, just kind of doing his job, but, uh, you know, just sitting down with Mr. Banks and kind of figuring out, like, what are some solutions, you know, I want to hear for six to eight weeks, like, how can I kind of break the ice with, with said child? And again, my time, show them that I'm genuine. And if we're, if we're doing stuff like that, going into these communities, it's we're doing it because, we genuinely want to. I worked with a lot of kids in those communities, and yeah. they they sniff it right away. They're like they're like dogs, where you know if they if they can sense that you're not being genuine. Mm -hmm. It's 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 that's you know it's it's not what they want. And yeah. a lot of these a lot of these kids that I do work with have my number, have my socials, and you know majority of them know like 
where where to find me at certain points of the day. So if they want to come and say, hey, like Josh, I, I need five minutes of your time. Okay. I, I was talking to a lot of us, you know, working with a lot of students who were going through a lot of mental trauma in their lives. And I'm, you know, my undergrad, I'm still kind of working through university, you know, I'm taking three, four courses in the summer. I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to graduate, get out, of, get out of Waterloo. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, fast track with my life. Like, I know nothing about no mental health. Like, I just know those numbers you can call. Uh, but he, he want, it was me he wanted. It was, it was the time that he wanted me to, mm-hmm. to put in and show that I cared. And um, I did it and still get calls from, you know, said person you know, every single day. He don't play football anymore, but he's doing what, what, what makes him happy. And it's, it's not always about, you know, the, the Mechies and the Trey Fords and Tyrone Fords. They're great. You know, love, love, love all, keep doing, keep making football great in Canada. Great, great. But the kids on the end of the bench, the kids at the bottom of the rosters, how are we providing opportunities and resources for them? The kids who do quit, I signed with like 60, 60 guys at Waterloo. I only graduated with like four to six of them. So now just imagine what happened to the other 56 of them, you know, 54, you know, uh, like what happened to that group? Um, I just, we have to be able to, to love every child, you know, and be able to create it. And again, it's, it starts with conversations like, if, if I'm going to recruit you and we're sitting on a call like this, and you know, I want JT. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna this JT. I'm gonna, I'm gonna protect your son. I'm gonna make sure he's, he's happy, and he's gonna turn into a man by the time he leaves my program. It's, you gotta honor those, those. Those are words you gotta stand on, knowing to, to the 54 to 56 guys that did quit that I did play with. Like some of them, I do wonder where they are. Some of them, I do wonder, you know, what happened, what could have been. And I, I came in with, or well, I signed with guys who. I thought we're going to play in the CFL one day or potentially in the NFL. The resources that were, you know, the resources that weren't afforded to them and they just were like against, I don't really blame the system. It, it's more stuff that should be prepared for these student athletes as they transition to university. And that's something that's kind of like, it's an intertwined, it's an intertwined of two. Like we have to be able to, to create a safe environment, inclusive environment for for all of our students because we're coming from a multifaceted of environments. You and I come from two different perspectives. You and I have seen life two different ways. And as we come here at this table, we're coming with two different journeys. And again, football is so great, so amazing. I love it because you get 110 different stories, you know, and I've heard over the year, I've played with hundreds of thousands of people in my career. And I've heard so many different amazing stories and it's helped me shape my way of living. And but this is what should be able to protect. And as we sit in with 110 players on our team or whatever the number is, we have to be able to protect and honor these young student athletes, protect them, you know, and be able to create. Because we're being real. We all heard it, you know, Pop Warner. And as we continue to play summer league football, that we're all not going to make, um, you know, the big leagues. We're all not going to make, we're all not trade Tyrell Ford. We're not, we're not those guys. But we do need more politicians. We do need, we do, we do need more educators. We do need more people that are doctors and dentists and you know mechanics and stuff like that. Like we do need people to, and those are those those aren't bad things. And yeah. as we hype, as we hype up Trey Ford and Tyrell Ford, let's hype up, you know, uh, Aaron Cole for doing what he's doing. Let's hype up Deshaun Steve for doing what he's doing. Let's hype up, you know, John Baptiste for doing what he's doing. Guys mm-hmm. that I played with. Let's be able to to, to the guys that are working and striving for those degrees. Let's, let's be able to, to hype them up and make them feel as they are, though. That's what it is. And it's no discredit to, to any any coach or anything. This is just the way we see it. There's so many mm-hmm. great people that are doing so many great things that play in youth sports. Student athletes that play in youth sports that we have to be able to honor. We came in. I came in with them. I, I want to know what, where they're at and how amazing they're doing without the game of football because the game of football taught them this this thing this perspective and this outlook on life and let's be able to protect that and let's see what what so-and-so is doing yeah and be able to to highlight it and make him feel like he's important and he's not neglected yeah no and and i appreciate you like what what i really heard from you is like again celebrating 
right? Celebrating the stories, right? Like really celebrating everyone's journey, right? Because everyone's going somewhere, right? Like, like some people are creating greatness on the football field. Some are creating greatness in the media. Some are creating in business, right? Some are creating it in just their personal lives, right? So, so I really love that idea. So let me ask you this, and, and I'll preface this by saying, so I moved into a role my last year of teaching, it was called culture for learning. So it was all around this idea of how to make, and this was like the foundations of, you know, where, where this diversity, equity, inclusion, like how do we really make education more? And I remember sitting at a professional development day and I remember looking around and, and again, these, the people, some of these colleagues were people I've known for many years, decades. And I looked around, these are some of the most genuine, most heartfelt people. And I remember looking around and going, I'm one of the few people of color. I'm, you know, one of their, and I just, and then I remember why it resonated with me. We started talking about like circle of privilege, right? Like all these yeah. criteria here. And I looked at the nine of them and I was like, oh my gosh, like even myself, like even though, again, being someone of color, most of the circle of privilege, like I checked the block, like I had those, right? Yeah. So, so it just made me really realize like, you know, how, systemic some of these challenges are right like how built into there so i'm curious with you you've just been through the system as a student athlete you are mm -hmm. now being a catalyst of change by going back into the system to educate our our youth our next our next generation mm -hmm. where do we from your lived experience what can we do to switch the conversation to really look at creating solutions so that we can provide these beautiful experiences for more people so we can actually get them to where they want to go beyond sports like I, i'm curious from your perspective i i think that that's a great question um i think that we just i think it just starts off by the i think it's okay my answer is so simple i apologize but it, no, I think it's, okay. it's just i think it's just the i think that the aspect of care like if we sit at a round table with the kids that I work with, um, they're all going to go on different journeys. And I know they're all like, Josh, I'm going to play. I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to UFT. I'm going to go to Waterloo. I want to come. I know in my heart, as I cheer on their journeys, uh, you may not finish at York. You may not finish at UFT. You may not finish at Mac. You may not finish at so-and-so. You may not finish here at Single Facts. Even though I'm here, you may not finish here. But um, we're going to make you feel and as you go through your journey, I'm going to make you feel as though you made it to the NFL or just to the CFL because that means something. That is something. You're, that's a catalyst of change. You know, we've seen too many guys, too many athletes, student athletes that, that slip through cracks and um, that will drop out after their first year. They will leave the university and they won't pursue their, their degrees. But it's, if we're coaches, as coaches, we all take the role as a mentor and as like a second father per se, uh, like a guardian role per se. I'll say that a guardian role, and we have to be able to um, protect our, you know, our, our babies, our these these student athletes. And it starts off by Karen. What are your goals? What what do you want to see yourself doing in four years? What does that look like? How can I help you? And be able to open up conversations like that and and be able to guide and protect them as they get their second and third year. Okay, we're itching closer to, to your graduation date. What are some things? I have resources here. I have a, a number, I have a friend that does financial literacy. His name is Aaron Cole. Do you want to connect with him? And then it just continues to go from there. Um, I have some business friends. You can connect with them through here. And just being able to provide these networking opportunities and the connection opportunities for these student athletes to say, hey, like, you know, football, football or soccer, or golf isn't it, but there's there's a there's a place for you. You know, I watched a TED talk and I'm not gonna lie, I almost cried watching it. There's there's always um uh, like my grade 10 teacher, Mr. Bottles, I'll never forget it. Um my uh my parents, I was trying to go to St. Thomas More in Connecticut, my grade eleven year well, grade 10 years gonna reclassify. I needed a uh, math and English reference. Um the man wrote on my, uh, he wrote on my reference letter, 
that I'm nothing more than a C plus student, and I'll be lucky to graduate university. I'll, I'll be lucky to graduate college. I won't go to university. That's what he said, at his words, and um, it stuck with me to this day. I'll never forget it. But he created an environment for me that I felt so scared to talk up and to share my feelings. And then I came here, and as the teachers here, the four teachers that I have, amazing teachers that I have, they supported and they challenged me. I mean, they supported, and then they 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 challenged me to to come out of that comfort zone. I, now I feel so at peace with being able to to share my story with with the masses. And I go to I go to I go to my practicums and hey, like this is my story. You know, I failed, but you know, you don't have to follow you know my path because here are, here are things that worked for me, and here are things that didn't work for me. And um, to kind of rail it back, you know, I just think it's it starts um, with the why and, and just being able to understand that a hundred football, like just speaking football wise, like 110 beautiful athletes that come in with beautiful stories, they're all not going to make it. We're being real. We're going to call a spade a spade. They're all not going to make it, but they have they have amazing stories. They're going to do amazing things. 110 people. They're going to go into the world. Three of them might play football next level, CFL, NFL, great. Some of them may go over and play in Europe for a couple of years, great. Then we're gonna have we're gonna have some politics. We may have a couple that that may own sports check, team, Tim Hortons, McDonald's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these now become networking opportunities for the for the younger class. Now, as you continue to, it's it's putting the the we see nine to five as a as a working shift, but when you do things like this, your shift never ends. You can get a call at 12 in the morning, hey, I'm going through this. Being able to, to be a resource and a guide for these student athletes to support them, guide them, create an environment for these student athletes to, to honor them. Because you say it to them when you want them, when they're in their they're in their like honeymoon phase, like, oh, you're 17, 18 years old with a, with a beautiful highlight tape. You got all these views, all these offers. Honor it when they're in their third year battling with mental health, they're battling with injury. Make sure you honor it. It's just being able to stand on your words. And it comes, it comes down to I'm not talking university, talk, this can even go to be high school. When you when you see these kids in grade nine, grade 10, they're not, they're not recruiting toys for you to be able to promote. Honor, honor the kids that are sitting on the end of the bench because that same kid that's on the end of the bench may be the boss of your son or your daughter one day. And I think it's just being able to to care. And I think once you care and you you understand that there is no deadline or there's no end shift to this, this thing we call coaching and mentoring, there is no end shift. Like right after this, I may get a call from one of my kids, like, hey, I'm going through this. Just talk, talk to me. What, what, what do we got to do? What do we got to do? Hey, I just want to play the video game for a bit. All right, let's play some video games. And to me, it's that's how I look at it because I went on a tangent, I forgot about the video, but the, the video was, um, there was, uh, was, he was talking about 20 kids he had in the class. And there was one student that was, um, he went in as like an in-service teacher. And there's one student that the teacher was being very, very hard on. And the service service teacher went in, the guy who was doing the TED Talk, went in and was pushing, was challenging that student, helped him support him, created an opportunity of learning for him. He ended up being, like a big time science, I forgot, I forgot the name, but and it's just like, those are the kids that we have to be able to support on because the kids that are battling with mental health, but because they're a third or fourth string and they're, they're trying to find their way and they don't feel like they don't have a sense of belonging, those are the kids that we gotta be able to care for because who, 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 who is to say where they are at night, what they're doing to their bodies, to, to the people around them. And, and we have to be able to, protect and honor these kids. Yeah. These student athletes. No, I love it. And, and I love the simplicity. And one word that I heard you share a number of times was this idea of care, right? The simple word of care. Yeah. And as you were sharing, what really came up for me, it reminded me of my conversation with coach uh, JP Cercelli of, of Windsor. And he was just talking about that care is one of their core pillars. And he says, care is the action 
right? And I love it because when you said care, it was like, you know, it's, it's having the phone, it's, it's having those conversations, being there, having those sometimes challenging conversations, just being that voice and, and what it comes back to and why I love care. It's, it's so simple, but it goes back to the greatest need of every human being. It's to feel seen, it's to feel heard and to feel appreciated. And yeah. when you take care of those three things, I, again, I know it's something we don't always talk about in the world of high performance sport. When you address people feeling seen, people feeling heard, people feel appreciated. Yeah. The world gets filled with possibility. Because, yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. No, I agree. So I'm curious, right? I mean, again, we've had a number of great conversations, right? Offline. So you know one of my biggest purpose my biggest purpose in life is to stretch people it's to get them to think into greatness and it's really encouraging them and showing them what it means to go all in and truly bet on themselves so i'm curious from you you're you're creating these great things in the classroom outside the classroom you know where could your life be you know, one year from now, three years from now, five, 10 years from now, like what would 10xing the vision, what would 10xing um, the palace be for you? One year from now, I don't know what it looks like. I just know that I want to be able to, I want to continue to be the voice of change. And we were talking earlier. Um, I want to be able to continue to talk about, you know, Black Canadian history. I want to be able to continue to talk about, you know, the Indigenous culture and being able to learn. As I'm still learning right now about the Big More culture, I want to be able to continue to talk about that, help um, advocate that um, to people, to student athletes, to, you know, people I see out in the world. Um, you know, five, ten years from now, I want to be able to do something um, that, seems impossible to people that um that i, I know i'm going to do it and uh but it's, it's right now i'm just trying to figure out where but I, i'm going to do something i know i am that it's good it's gonna it's gonna shake the culture a bit but um that's what i want i, I want to be able to be in an environment coaching wise um yeah. and mentoring at a program where i'm educating my my student athletes and i'm i'm caring for them and i'm treating them like they they all deserve and i'm creating opportunities for them and at the end of the day that football is just about opportunities you know and um um whether i'm in the east coast back home in toronto wherever i am um i know that uh, i want to do i, I want to just continue to create opportunities and i, I want to create a program here that's you know that's deemed a powerhouse you know on and off the field that we're doing things in the community to, to create change we're doing we're doing things on the field that we're making change and um and like i said i think most importantly i think it's just my words i want to continue to lead with my words and i want to continue to use uh, my platforms that i use to be an opportunity of a, of a learning space to continue to talk about things like the black canadian history talk about you know the indigenous culture um and just talk about you know why just the little things are important to, to for you know student athletes, and why it's important to continue to be in conversations like this, where we're able to to share ideas and share our experiences and our journey together. And I think that's should be at the forefront of why we do things. But you know, to sum it up. You know, ten years from now, I know I will be somewhere, you know, building, you know, a program. Um, with my peers and we'll be making change. And yeah. Okay. So I love it. I love, I, I could definitely see that that question, right. Kind of sparked, right. The creativity in you. I could see you starting to tap into your imagination, which is, you know, you're planting great seeds, brother. So Thank I'm you. curious, you know, you know, what can we do to help and support you, the dream Academy, you know, what, what, what can we do? Uh, just continue to be a voice for us, you know, continue to, um, you know, I, I don't know how people perceive my program, like, um, my, my program is a safe space for people, for athletes, students to come and, um, 
I like the word kumbaya to come together and, and yeah. uh, to come into unison and we're gonna work like I got 20 years of playing experience like what I know my brother is you know times two that so um I'm learning from you know, an experienced guy like himself. He's a football junkie. He's a football guy. He's a football maniac. So um, you're getting you're getting coached up, you know. Um, and it's fun. You know, we want to be able to continue to create an environment that is going to continue to challenge them, and create you know life skills opportunities. Just continue to, to to build, you know, our programs. They want to continue to branch it off. You know, I'll be home in May. And, um, I'll be training with my student athletes in May, and I hope it's you know not something that's going to be looked at as a bad thing because of some summer program going on. But I'm going to continue to work with my my youth on the days that I do, and um, just continue to advertise my program, continue to to help us um, get to where we need to get to, and um, just help build the name. You know, to continue to have conversations about Dream Academy, what is Dream Academy? to sit here on a call and be able to tell you what Dream Academy is. And I think more than anything, that's what I love to do. I love to, I love people ask me what it is and why I did it. Um, Cause then you can hear the passion and the care and um, the lasting, you know, whether it's one phone call as to why I do what I do. But um, yeah, if we're, if we're just able to continue to, to follow what we're doing, support what we're doing and continue to share it, you know, and I think it's just going to go a long way. Maybe the little things, the little things matter just supporting, supporting, um, liking things and just being able to, to help us, you know, market us so we're able to, to get to where we want to get to. And it's just, yeah. like I said, little, little things, little things matter. Okay, I love it. So I'll, I'll be sure to share all of the Dream Academy handles on, on social. And, and if anyone wants to connect with you or any of the young people, uh, that, that have questions, you know, that they can reach out and, and chat. For sure. So, Josh, I, I, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. I, I want to acknowledge you for the, for the man you are, right? The great brother you are, the great son, the great teacher, coach, and mentor. More importantly, the amazing human being you are, you know? The one thing I've really come to appreciate about you is just your willingness and your, your willingness to take courageous action. And, and why that's so powerful is you are giving people, because you are taking courageous action, you're, give, you're showing others and giving others permission to dream, which comes back to what the Dream Academy is about. So, so I just really want to acknowledge you for, for being a catalyst of change and, and for really not just talking the talk and walking the walk. So thank you for um, reminding me right. how simple this game can be. I appreciate that. I thank you for allowing me to share my story, share my journey with you today. Um, I want to take the time to kind of thank my family. Um, it's been hard. This just has been hard. And, um, thus, it's been like very hard to communicate, just being able to be in practicum and, and uh, coaching and just the imbalance of the, the, yeah. the time change. It's been hard. I just want to be able to kind of, you know, to thank my family, to thank you know, all my loved ones. Uh, everyone out there that's you know that's been a a voice to kind of help me to challenge me and uh, and to help me you know do better for myself you know my partner um my friends my parents you know my brother my sister just you know just being you know i i've i've come a long way and i'm, I'm still going and i'm just i'm happy to be on this journey this path that i'm going on where i'm where I'm elevating to, I'm just so appreciative of people around me. People like yourself just being giving me the opportunity, you know, that the, the, the day you did to, hey, you know, let's get on a call. Like, I, I was shooting my shot, you know, didn't think it was going to go in, and you messaged me back. It was, you know, uh, so I'm thankful that, you know, you're not connected and I'm, I'm appreciative, I'm humble that, that I'm humbled that I'm here kind of sharing my story with you. So I appreciate yeah, it. It's all good. So here's my reminder to everyone watching, everyone listening. Josh dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom that you can apply as an athlete or more importantly to the game of life. But as I often remind you in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent and focused application of that great knowledge that actually creates great results. So my challenge to you is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom 
and go apply it to your life today so you can start reaching your next level of greatness. And as I remind you every week in the huddle, you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. And my only ask here is, if this conversation resonated with you, share it with someone. Share it with a loved one that needs to hear this. Because the more people we have understanding these simple ideas, the more greatness there's going to be in the world. I look forward to chat with you next time in the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day.